This is a video that's going to walk you through the calculations that are required for the stoichiometry lab. All right, this is the example, and they pretty much have everything all written out, so I'm going to walk through the example and make sure you understand how to do this. So first off, they have the balanced equation here. It's already balanced for you, and this is the exact same equation that you're going to be using. Now they are starting the problem with 8.25 grams and 5 grams. You're going to have different amounts, but we're going to walk through with these numbers and then you can just substitute your numbers in. Alright, the next thing is they have taken and found the molar mass of CaCl2 by having one calcium and two chlorines, so they have that molar mass already for you. And then for K2CO3, there's two Ks, three Os, and one C off the periodic table and they added all those up for you. So those are the two molar masses that you're going to use. Alright, so what's going to happen is you're going to take the amount of calcium chloride that you used. Now they had 8.25, you're going to put your number right in here. So this number, 8.25, that's where your number is going to go. This is going to be the same because it's already done for you. So you're going to take your number times 1 and divide by 110.98 and then you're going to get the amount of moles of calcium chloride that you have. We're going to do the same thing with the K2CO3, except you're going to plug in the amount that you used in your lab instead of 5 grams. Your number is going to go right here instead of 5. You're going to take that number times 1 and divide by 138.21. And that's going to get you the moles of the K2CO3 that you have. So that's going to be the first step. Then you're going to take that moles that you got from up here when you took your number and divided by 110. That number is going to go right here. And then we're going to do a mole to mole ratio. So when I look up in my balanced equation, I have one in front of here. And I'm trying to find the calcium carbonate because that's what you made in your lab, the solid that you made. So there's one here and one here. So that means my mole ratio is going to be 1 mole of calcium carbonate to 1 mole of calcium chloride. So that number times 1 divided by 1, you get the same thing. Then you're going to take the K2CO3 that you got from up here. It's going to go right here, and then we're going to have to do a mole ratio for that one. So here I have one of those, and I have one of these. So my mole ratio, again, is going to be 1 to 1. And then I would have that number here. So now I have moles of calcium carbonate that I could make if I started with certain amounts here. I have to figure out which is the limiting reactant. And the limiting reactant is the one that can make the least amount. So when I look here at the moles of this one that I could make, and I look at the amount that I could make here, this one is smaller. So that means K2CO3 is going to be my limiting reactant. So you're going to want to look at your two numbers here and see which one's smaller. Whichever one is smaller is going to tell you which one of these is your limiting reactant. And in this example, the K2CO3 was limiting because it was the smallest, and so it could produce the least amount. Alright, now we're not done yet. So the next thing I need to do is find the molar mass of calcium carbonate. So one calcium, three oxygens, and one carbon added up off the table. This is going to be the molar mass. So it's the same molar mass that you're going to use. And you're going to take whichever one was your limiting reactant out here, whichever one of these numbers was the smallest. In this case, this would be the one that's the smallest. I'm going to take that down here. So there's the amount. And then I'm going to take it times the molar mass of calcium carbonate, which came from here. So you're going to take your number here, which is the smallest one, times 100.09, and that's going to get you the theoretical yield of calcium carbonate. So this is telling you how much you could actually make, calculated-wise, for the calcium carbonate. Now experimentally, you did it in the lab, and you came up with a measured amount that you made, but this is what we would get if we calculated. So that's your theoretical yield. To find your percent yield, you have to take the actual yield. This would be the one that you measured your dry product in the lab. You're going to take that number here, 
Then you're going to divide by the theoretical yield that you calculated, which was this number. It's going to go right down here. So the actual divided by the theoretical times 100 is going to get you your percent yield. Okay, so for your lab, this is where you would get the mass of the calcium chloride that you would use up in that stoichiometry problem. And this is where you're going to get the mass of your K2CO3 that you're going to use in the stoichiometry problem. You're going to go through those calculations and figure out which one of those is limiting and then use that limiting to find the theoretical yield. Now, your actual yield is what you're going to get here. And this you're going to get by taking the filter paper, the watch glass, and your product. You're going to subtract the filter paper and the watch glass. So that's where this number comes from. And that's your actual yield. All right, so they want you to decide which is the limiting for each trial. So you're going to have to take your trial. For trial one, you're going to walk through all those calculations that we just went through and figure out which is the limiting. And then you're going to show your work. So this is for the example problem, and this is for trial one, and this is for trial two. And you're going to decide, is it CaCl2 or K2CO3 that's limiting? And remember, the limiting is the one that makes the least amount of calcium carbamate. Okay, so then you're going to fill in which was the limiting, if it was CaCl2 or if it was K2CO3 in each case. Then you're going to take that number and go through the calculations to find the theoretical yield. And that's, remember, the calculation that we did up above. The actual yield you're going to get off your data table. For an example, that number was the 0.9 that's up here. So the mass of your dry product, that's what's going to go for your actual yield. And then you're going to work through the calculation to find the percent yield by taking the actual yield, divided by the theoretical yield, and take it times 100. And they have work here, a space, so that you can show how you calculated the theoretical yield. And they have space here so you can show how you calculated your percent yield. But keep in mind, it's exactly like the calculations that we walked through here. So you're going to find moles of each one, then do the mole ratios, exact same mole ratios. You're just changing this number and this number. And then that's going to get you your, um, tell you which one is your limiting. And then you'll take that limiting one, and you have to take it and walk through this calculation to find your theoretical yield. And remember, they've already done all the molar masses for you. And then, lastly, you'll find your percent yield. So you're going to show that work for both trials 1 and trials 2. So hopefully that kind of helps you walk through the calculations for the lab.